you, there's no doubt about it. I like you, there's no doubt about it. You are my good friend. And friends, thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to share some ideas with you today. And um, this is going to be kind of an unplugged Dr. Jean. I'm not going to be using any recorded music. Everything I'm going to do is simple. And even if you don't think you can sing, the great thing about children is you just sing and have a good time. They don't know if you can't sing. And most of the little songs that I'm going to be singing today go to familiar tunes like The Farmer in the Dell, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, If You're Happy and You Know It. Just pick a tune and start singing. They will respond much better if you sing to them than if you tell them what to do. And um, I have been at this rodeo a long time, and I've used these things through the years. And so I'm just so excited to share these ideas with you. Now you take these ideas, you use them any way you want. You adapt them, you change them, see what will work for you. Teachers don't steal ideas, they harvest ideas. So I hope you will har harvest my ideas today. And um, transitions are all those little in-between times when things get out of control. And so uh, the ideas I'm going to be sharing with you are for how to start your day, how to grab children's attention, how to get them to clean up, line up, and then just some in between activities that you can do. So it's always important to get your day started with a song. When you sing, your brain emits endorphins. It just makes you happy, it makes you smile. This is one of my favorite good morning songs. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. We're so Glad you're here. A little bit louder. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. We're so glad you're here. A little softer. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. Rise and shine and welcome to school today. We're so glad you're here. Now, did you notice how I sang softer at the end? Sometimes if you will sing soft and lower your voice and slow down a little bit, it will kind of naturally pull the children in and help them calm down a little bit. I like to choose one song and use it every day to start the day because it becomes an indicator activity. When the brain hears that, they know, oh, it's time to get the day started. This happens at sports events. People will be milling around, and the minute they hear the national anthem, you know what they do? They get in their seats and they get ready for the game. Now, uh, another thing you want to do to start your day is you want to greet the children with a handshake. And so one of my favorite handshakes is just the thumb kiss. All the children hold up their thumb, and you go up to each child and you touch their thumb and you go, good morning. What a personal way to connect to them. Another handshake that the kids love is the Spider-Man handshake. So you hold up four fingers, they hold up four fingers. You intertwine your fingers with theirs. Spiders have eight wiggly legs. We have eight wiggly fingers. And um, you'll find lots of other handshake ideas on my website. Now, uh, a good song to sing to get children to form a circle goes to the tune of Lassie and Laddie. And I just love this song. It works so well with kids. When you want to make a circle and you want them to sit down or play a circle game, you just start singing this song. Oh, we can make a circle, a circle, a circle. Oh, we can make a circle and hold hands right now. Hold hands with a friend, a circle never ends. We can make a circle and hold hands right now. Isn't that better than make a circle and sit down? You see, when you sing, it just lightens your load and their load a little bit too. Now, um, another way to get children's attention is with some attention grabbers, and, and I'm going to teach you a few. I would suggest you take one and use it all the time. If you use different ones, it confuses them, but just take one. So choose the one that you like best. The first one I'm going to do is called Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Roll, lollipop. 
We've been talking. Now let's stop. Do it with me. Tootsie roll, lollipop. We've been talking. Now let's stop. And you just continue doing that. You might have to do it five or six times till everybody has joined you. One secret about grabbing children's attention is to use their hands. If they're just looking and listening, you might not catch that. But if you can get them to do something with their little hands, that's going to really help. Here's another attention grabber that you could use. Boys and girls, whenever you hear me say, hocus pocus, I want you to put your focus goggles on and say, everybody focus. Here we go. Hocus pocus, everybody focus. Now, boys and girls, keep your focus goggles on. Look at the front of this book. What do you think this story is about? Or look at this picture. What can you tell me about this animal? If you can get them to do this, you've got a much better chance of them attending to what you want them to look at. And aren't these things better than, shh, be quiet and listen to me? That doesn't work, but these things really do work. Now, another one, uh, this is a little song I like to sing to the tune of The Adams Family. Give me a clap, 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 give me a snap, give me a snap. Now fold your hands and put them down into your lap. And you get their hands just where you want them to be. Another good one uh, to get them sitting down quietly goes to the tune of head, shoulders, knees, and toes. So if you just sing, head, shoulders, knees, and lap, knees, and lap. Head, shoulders, knees, and lap, knees, and lap. Legs are crisscross applesauce. And my hands are in my lap. Lap, lap. Do you see the difference between saying don't do this and don't do this? And these songs are positive redirection. And my hands are in my lap. Sing to them what you want them to do. Um, another great attention grabber I learned in an inner city school in Atlanta a long time ago. When the teacher wanted the children's attention, she would say, how does my teacher feel about me? And the children would look at her and go, I'm as special as special can be because my teacher believes in me. Isn't that a positive reaffirmation? Let's try that again. Teacher says, how does my teacher feel about me? And the children will look at you and go, I'm as special as special can be because my teacher believes in me. I think that um, a, a good thing to do with that might be to put it on a poster and put it on your door and you could refer to it at different times in the day. Now, another good way to get a children's attention is with something called callbacks. I'll say something and then they respond. And you have to you have to teach them these little callbacks, but once they pick it up, you know, you can use it anytime. Hands on top, everybody stop. So the teacher says, hands on top, and the children look at you and say, everybody stop. I don't know why that works, but there's something about putting their hands on top of their head and looking at you, and you have them right here. And you know, you have to reach them before you can teach them or tell them what you want them to do. Um, another good attention grabber is um, macaroni and cheese, freeze please. And that kind of makes a fun game to do with the children that you say macaroni and cheese and they go freeze please. And you know, these things are really good for the executive function too because it helps children develop self-regulation and self-control. Now, a really good one um, to help get kids centered is this one. Repeat after me, boys and girls. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Across the chest, across the chest. Pat on the back, pat on the back, because we're the best, because we're the best. And there's one something about when they hug themselves, it centers them and helps them get self-regulation. Let's try that again. Repeat after me. And, you know, these things, y'all, you have to add the magic. You can say, repeat after me, thumbs up across. The Listen to the difference. Repeat after me, thumbs up, thumbs up, across the chest, across the chest. Pat on the back, pat on the back, because we're the best, 
because we're the best. And they just can't resist that. They just love doing that and get, getting into it with you. I also use cheers to help children uh, focus and to engage them. And this one is one of my favorites. It's called the hamburger cheer. So I'll just say, boys and girls, show me your hamburger meat. Make your hamburger. Put it on the skillet. Is it done? Not yet. Is it done? Not yet. Is it done? Well done. And it just kind of pulls them in. Uh, the bubble gum cheer. Boys and girls, let's get out our bubble gum. Open it up. Put it in your mouth. And again, that pulls them in and engages them. Um, and then one I used to use in my room to get my children's attention, I taught them whenever I say, where are Miss Feldman's little angels? They would look at me and they would shine their halos and smile. And they would be doing crazy things. And I'd say, where are my little angels? And they'd look at me and smile and just shine their little halos. So um, those are just some good attention grabbers that you can use and adapt in your room in different ways. Now, another transition is cleanup time. And one thing I did in my room, I had a job and it was called the five minute person. And so five minutes before cleanup time or five minutes before coming in from the playground, I would tell the five minute person, go warn all of your friends. And they'd walk around and go, five more minutes, five more minutes. You see, children need time to bring closure to their activities. Just like you and I don't like to be interrupted, they don't either. So that five minute person was a good way to warn them before cleanup time. And then I would always sing a song to get them to clean up. Hi ho, hi ho, it's clean up time we know. Put the toys away for another day. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, a cleaning up will go. Everyone join in the fun. Hi ho, hi ho, and of course, that's the door song. Or you could sing a song to Jingle Bells. Tidy up, tidy up, put your things away. Tidy up. Tidy up, we're finished for today. Oh, tidy up, tidy up, put your things away. For we'll get them out again another school day. And you can see, that I can't sing. It's okay. Just take, make up a tune and, and sing what you want them to do. You'll be able to find all these ideas on my website, drjean.org, D-R-J-E-A-N.org, and I have lots of other YouTube videos where you can just watch me do handshakes or the cheers or different things like that. So um, I'm just giving you some little little tidbits today, some little, uh, little morsels and little appetizers that I hope you'll go to my website and check these things out a little bit more. Now, another transition is when it's time to line up, and children and lines do not work well together. Um, and But the best thing you can do is line them up as quickly as you can and um, a little song works well. Lining up is easy to do, lining up is easy to do when you take care of only you, when you take care of only you. Feet together, hands by sides, feet together, hands by sides. We've got spirit, we've got pride, we've got spirit, we've got pride. Sound off, one, two, hit it again, three, four, ready now, one, two, three, four out the door and it just gave them a chance to to get in line and think about where we were going and it told them to put your hands together by your side again that positive redirection this one um goes to the tune from gilligan's island lining up it <laughs> well let me think i get that 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 lining up is easy to do when you take care of only you Feet together, hands by sides. We've got spirit, we've got pride. So you just saw there, I just took another tune and said the same thing to the children. Now, you can also get them ready to go out by playing a game like boys and girls. Show me your butterfly wings. They put their hands behind their back and flop their butterfly wings. Or boys and girls, show me your bear. Show me your cave. 
put your bear in the cave. And if you can get them to put their hands behind their backs, then the rest of their body is going to probably do what you want it to do. Another one I used to use all the time was hips and lips. Boys and girls, show me your hips and your lips. You don't have to tell them to strut. They'll just figure that out all on their own. Now, um, I've got some little props that I wanted to share with you that I will often use um, in the classroom for some different transitions. One of them is my little iPhone. So this is a cylinder block with an index card and um, I wrote a capital I on it and it's my iPhone. Now, I can use this at the beginning of the day. I can pass this around, tell me something good and I pass it around and they each say a sentence starting with I like, I am happy to be here today or I wanna play in the blocks. It just gives them something to anticipate about the day. Some of you who work in faith-based schools could use this for I am thankful for. Um, you could also use it this, this at the end of the day, you pass it around and they each say something that they did during the day that, that they learned or something that they did that made them feel proud. So just gives them a chance to speak and to listen to others. Now, uh, another little prop I wanted to share with you is what I call a brain toy. Sometimes when you do your large group activities, the children's hands get a little bit fidgety and they can't keep their hands to themselves. So you get a little shoe box and write brain toys on it and then you just get some old socks and put knots in them. And for children who have a hard time keeping their hands still, invite them to get a brain toy. Would you like to get a brain toy? And they can just hold it and fiddle with it. Now. I don't like brain toys that are too cute because then they focus on the toy and not on you. But a lot of experts say that if some children need something like this to calm them down a little bit. And, and it could be something, you know, even just like a little pipe cleaner that they can twist, uh, twist it around a little bit. Now, um, another thing I wanted to share with you for like circle time, these are things that I call sitter spots and they're just circles cut out of fun foam or felt. You could write the children's names or the older children could decorate their own. And when you get ready to do a circle time activity, you can put these on the carpet and then you can disperse your children who don't get along so well together and you can separate those troublemakers. These are also good like for independent reading time, they can get their sitter spot and find a place or you and your friend get your sitter spots and you can work on a puzzle together. Different. It gives them a defined area to work in. I have uh, another little prop that I like to use for transitions. This is what I call a happy chappy. It's just chapstick with an aroma in it. And let's say I want to get the children quiet for a story. I can take my little happy chappy and those that are sitting, sitting quietly, I can say, you get a happy chappy and you get a happy chappy. Um, I could use this at lineup. Isn't this better than giving out stickers or things like that? And, um, Sometimes if everybody's doing the wrong thing and you can find one child doing the right thing, you can sing, if you don't know what to do, look at George. If you don't know what to do, look at George. He will show you what to do so you can do it too. If you don't know what to do, look at George. And that way, children know, oh, I'm supposed to be, sometimes they just don't know what you want them to do. So find one child doing the right thing and they can model that behavior. You can also get a flashlight. And um, if you find a child, a spotlight on Raquel, she's busy over there putting up the books in the library or spotlight on Louise, she's lined up ready to go outside to play. Um, put the spotlight on the one child doing what you want them to do. Now, um, there are some other transition times during the day, like when children are washing their hands and cleaning up. In fact, researchers say we waste about 20% of the day having kids stand up, sit down, get quiet, clean up the room. Those little transition times are when you can reinforce a lot of your skills. And I have a, a, a my little bears here. I love my letter bears. And you can just cut these out of paper. And I'll show you several variations of this. So let's say we've been cleaning up the room and five children have joined me on the rug and the others are still fooling around. Instead of wasting that time, I pick up my bears and I sing this song to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. H-Bear, H-Bear, who do you see? 
I see Bee Bear looking at me. Bee Bear, Bee Bear, who do you see? I see G Bear looking at me. You better hurry up and get over here before we get through the bears. So you make a game out of them. They have to get over before the bears are done. Now, I could use these bears for dismissing children. When you see the bear with the letter that your name starts with, you may go to your learning center or you may line up and get ready to go play. Now, you could also use these bears at the beginning of the school year if you were working on children's names, and for the younger children, they can't read their name, but they can read their picture. Alex, Alex, who do you see? I see Sally looking at me. Or you could just use their names. Isaac, Isaac, who do you see? I see Lola looking at me. They love their names. You could also use the love of these bears for colors. So you could do blue bear, blue bear, who do you see? I see green bear looking at me. Do you see how I take something simple and then adapt it for different skills? I was sharing these one day and a teacher said, yes, but Dr. Jean, my class, it, my class is the dolphins. Well, make dolphins and use them that way. You could use these for all sorts of skills and different things that you are working on when you've got a few little minutes, a uh, few minutes for extra time. And then one of the best attention grabbers, one of the best ways to engage children in the whole wide world is with finger plays. And I have lots of free YouTube videos with finger plays, but I'll just do a few of them, a few of them with you right now. Um, I learned this one when I was in kindergarten. These are grandma's glasses, and this is grandma's cap, and this is the way she folds her hands and puts them in her lap. These are Grandpa's glasses, and this is Grandpa's hat, and this is the way he folds his arms, just like that. Now, my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Myers, over 60 years ago, didn't do that finger play because it was good for the brain or small motor skills or anything like that. She did it because she knew it would get our hands just where she wanted them. Wasn't she a smart teacher after all? You can do the same thing too. Look at this finger play, repeat after me. The finger band is coming to town, coming to town, coming to town. The finger band is coming to town so early in the morning. This is the way we play our drums, play our drums, play our drums. This is the way we play our drums so early in the morning. Boys and girls, what's another instrument in the band? Oh, a horn. This is the way we play our horns, play our horns, play our horns. This is the way we play our horns so early in the morning. And then I'd let the children name different instruments in the band. And then I would end with this. The finger band is going away. and you could hear a pin drop in my classroom when I did that. Even young children love these finger plays. These finger plays work with your toddlers on up through the primary grades. This is one of the first ones I did with my granddaughter. Show me your turtle. Here is a turtle. He lives in his shell. He likes his home very well. When he gets hungry, he comes out to sleep. When he goes back, when he gets hungry, he comes out to eat. Then he goes back into his house to sleep. She couldn't talk when she was 16 months old, but she could go. And this one is one of my, I just, I just love finger plays. They're just so good for oral language and, and small motor skills. And y'all children are spending so much time in front of a screen. I think the importance of these transitions is just looking them in the eyes and being a real person with them. A couple of weeks ago, I was at a school and a little boy came up and poked me and he said, you're real you're real, because they'd only seen me on the screen before. And so, you know, what an opportunity you have just to connect with these children. Well, let's do this one. Show me your little girl. This little girl is ready for bed. On the pillow, she lays her head. Wrap the covers around her tight. That's the way she spends the night. Morning comes, she opens her eyes. Off with a toss, the covers fly. She jumps out of bed. 
she's hungry, let's give her some breakfast. Brush her teeth, come here, get her clothes on her. Don't forget her backpack. Now she's ready and on her way to work and play at school all day. Show me your little boy. This little boy is ready for me. And y'all, they will just be totally engaged and mesmerized with some of these little finger plays. Well, a good thing to do with the finger plays, um, I would take one each week. You'll find these on my website. Put it on an index card. Whenever you want to get the kids quiet, whenever you want to engage them, do the finger play all week long. At the end of the week, glue it on an index card, punch a hole in it, put it on a book read. The next week, do another finger play. The next week, another one. If you would do a finger play every week from now until June, you're going to have a whole ring full of rhymes. And you know what? These are going to be in your brain forever. And when you're in the nursing home with me, we can say these together with each other. Um, I don't know if this ever happens to you, but sometimes when I'm with a group of children and I need to, I think, oh, I need to do a finger play or I need to do a song or nursery rhyme, my mind goes blank. Well, this idea might help you too. What you do is you get a little gift bag and you cut out some CDs, just some little cardboard circles. And on the backs of the circles, you write the words to your finger plays or nursery rhymes or songs. And you put these in the bag. And when you can't think of anything to do, or maybe you've got a few extra minutes while the kids are cleaning up the room, you go up to one child and you say, here's a quarter. Put a quarter in the jukebox and pull out a song or a rhyme or a finger play. And you'll always have something to do with the children. Another teacher told me that she put her songs and finger plays on lollipops and um, kept these in a can and when they needed an activity they could pull this out and do it with the children. Well, one more transition, one more time. At the end of the day, it's nice to bring the group back together and bring closure to your day and talk about what a good day we had and, and review all the things they've learned and let them tell you their favorite thing. They could turn to a partner and do partner share and each tell their favorite thing that they did at school. Um, another thing I like to do, I have these little brain tickets that you can run off. There's the pattern on my website. And um, at the end of the day, they tell me something that they knew that they learned and they get a brain ticket. And then, of course, I always like to sing a song at the end of the day. Um, this one goes to the tune of She'll Be Coming Round the Mountain. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. It is time to say goodbye. Give a smile and blink your eyes. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. Goodbye, friends. Yeehaw! So that was a great goodbye song that we sang, and it got everybody perky. Um, there's another one that I like to sing. It's called May There Always Be Sunshine. In fact, one teacher told me that they ended their day by holding hands and singing this song and uh, moving back and forth. And she said it could be a really stressful day, but it always ended on a positive note with this song. May there always be sunshine. May there always be blue skies. May there always be children. May there always be you. May there always be stories. May there always be music. May there always be teachers to care for you. May there always be sunshine. May there always be blue skies. May there always be teachers as special as you. Thank you for being my friends. I hope you'll visit my website and blog spot. You can watch this video again if you forget some of the tunes. Um, I have lots of other things for free uh, that you'll find on my blog, drjeanandfriends.blogspot.com and my website, drjean.org. So take care. God bless. Bye now.